So now we're going to take a look at using Eventbrite Organizer app specifically for sales and customer service. We're going to start by logging in using the credentials that you use for your Eventbrite account. Once you're logged in, you'll be able to select which event that you want to conduct sales within. Tap the event to select it. So on your left are all of the functionalities that you can use within Eventbrite Organizer. Dashboard is going to give you the event stats, so gross ticket sales and number of tickets checked in. Sell is to actually sell tickets for your event. Check-in is where you can manually search or check-in attendees for your event. Orders is where you can conduct customer service. And settings is where you'll be able to set specific ticket types to be checked in and also set up printing and name your device. So we're going to start with naming your device. To name your device, you're going to go to settings, make sure you tap general, and then you're going to tap name device. You can name your device either the name of the person that will be the cashier for that day or you can name your device main entrance one. It's whatever makes the most sense for the event organizer. And hit OK. Make sure that you wait for the device to update and make sure that the updated name is reflected under device name. Now we're going, going to enable printing. In order to do that, make sure that you already have your star printer and router set up. If you do, go ahead and toggle printing on. You're going to wait for a star printer to show below the Discover Printers list. I see mine here, so I'm going, ahead, going to go ahead and select it. Once you select it, you want to make sure that print tickets are enabled by tapping the eye icon next to Connected. So I see that both print tickets and print receipts are enabled, so I'm good to go and I'm going to hit test printer to actually make sure that it's all connected. Once it is, you'll see this printout and it lets you know that you're good to go. So now we're going to move on to actually selling a ticket. So to sell a ticket, go back to the sell tab. I have two options here for ticket types. In order to select a ticket type, I'm going to tap the plus sign or you can actually tap the number to increment the quantity. So whatever you prefer, either works. Once you have your total here, you're going to go ahead and tap purchase. And I have collect attending information on right now, so that allows me to collect the first, last name, and email address of the ticket buyer. So I can enter that information if that's something that I want to collect. If it's not, I can actually tap skip and I have the option to pay with a cash with cash or a credit card. So I'm going to use a credit card for this transaction. When the card reader is correctly connected, you'll see a blue swiper detected notification at the top. Make sure that you see that before trying to process a credit card. To process, you want the card information facing you and you're just going to swipe one time down Anything over $25 will require a signature from the customer, so they just need to sign with their hand, tap confirm to process the payment. Since I have a printer connected, it is printing a receipt and all of my tickets. Once you're done with the transaction, you can tap done and move on to the next transaction. So now we're going to look at processing a credit card transaction without a card reader. You can do it this way. It is a little bit more time consuming, but it is possible. So again, I'm going to skip collecting attending information. I'm going to tap credit and I'm going to enter the credit card manually. So as you can see here, it's just credit card number, expiration date, and CVV. Once you have that in information entered, just hit make payment. 
and process the order. To process a cash payment, we're going to go through the same steps. Select your ticket type, then tap purchase. Going to skip collect information, and I'm going to tap cash. It gives you the ability to enter the amount that the attendee gives to you. You can either enter this number in, and this is purely here to help you. It will not affect any numbers if you use this or do not use this. Uh, once that is done, you can hit complete order to process the payment. So now we're going to process a transaction using a discount code. So go ahead and select promo code at the bottom. Search for the promo code that you want to use. Once you hit enter, you'll see that it has taken $5 off each of my ticket types. I'm going to go ahead and tap which one I want to purchase. I'm going to hit cash payment because that's what the attendee has given me. And I'm going to complete the order. We're going to take a look at orders. So I'm going to go ahead and tap orders there on the left. This is where your customer service needs can be completed. To use this, you want to tap the search bar at the top, and you can use the customer's last name, the email address that was used at the time of the order, the order number, or the last four digits of the customer's card to pull that order up. I'm going to use the last name. Once I find the name, I'm going to tap it to pull up the order details. So as you can see here, gives all of the order information, so the customer's first and last name, the order number, the date that the order was completed, the type of sale that it was, the payment method used, and the type of ticket that the person purchased. These three options here will be your customer service options, so you have the ability to refund, which will only be done by an event manager, so check with that person before processing any refunds. Uh, we have the ability to reprint a ticket here. So we can select the ticket to reprint if someone has forgotten their ticket. And then we can also email the customer's ticket. Um, this will include a receipt and you can choose to include the PDF ticket so they receive that on their mobile device and then can pull that ticket up by his or herself. The last thing that you can also do within orders is actually check in a ticket. So this is great. Um, again, if a customer does not have his or her ticket on their person, then you can locate them here and then swipe them in to check in. You can also uncheck them if this was an accident. We're going to go back to Dashboard. So Dashboard is helpful because it gives you a breakdown of what ticket types were sold, what payments were cash and what payments were credit card. This is a really helpful tool for box office managers when doing end of day reconciliation. And then to refresh this dashboard, you actually have to log out of the organizer app and log back in to have a clean slate here.